Hey, Vsears, Matt again here tonight on a Wednesday and uh, making a second video. This response to Adam 80s Heaven. He asked people to show their Christmas uh, music collection. So, uh, here for you, Adam. Gonna do that for you here right now. Uh, yeah, I'm the guy to go to on that. I love that stuff. I uh, A lot of people don't like Christmas music or they just like it, you know, on the 24th and the 25th. I'm one of those that the uh, XM radio is about to start playing their Christmas channels here on the 11th, about six days away. I'll be listening to it. Got some uh, new Christmas records since last year, and I uh, got them a month or so ago, and I was wanting to listen to them, but I held off. I thought, now too early, too early. Anything after Halloween is fair game, though, so I'm like that. Uh, I'm uh, My collection is one of the is the uh, only Christmas collection you can see from outer space. So, uh, okay, maybe it's not that big, but I've actually seen people on the BC that have bigger collections. But um, i am got a pretty impressive collection, I think. I'm proud of it, and I like it. I actually listen to the stuff. So, uh, yeah, last year I did, uh, I don't know, three videos, maybe four videos, People were doing their Christmas collections. I did three really long videos because I tend to make kind of long-winded and just ramble on boring videos. So if you want to see in-depth about my collection, those are still up there. You can go watch them if you want to. This time I thought I'd just sort of go through them and maybe comment here and there on a few of the records. But uh, we will start off. These are... REM's Christmas, their fan club uh, Christmas releases. They, uh, if you were a member of REM's fan club, every Christmas you got a Christmas package that uh, they're the only ones that I know of, except for the Beatles, that did a Christmas release every year. They did it, uh, they didn't do it every year because they started around, what, 80, 1980, 1979, or 80 when they put out their first record, but um, they did Christmas releases from, I want to say, 1988 to about 207, 208, right about when they broke up, so nearly 20 years of Christmas releases, only went out to members of their fan clubs, I'm not going to take all these out, but it would be, um, some years it would be a 45, a vinyl record, most years it would be a CD because, you know, most of this was in the 90s and that was the CD age. Some years it was uh, not even a, a record per se, it would be a VHS videotape uh, one or two years that had them doing um, like a live song. Some of them were not even Christmas related. They had one of them was them and Neil Young on stage doing a, a version of Ambulance Blues, the old Neil Young song from On the Beach. And a couple of them were just live versions of their songs. Most of them were Christmas related, however. I don't have all of them, I just have a few years here. Um, so I don't know that they wrote any of them. I think most of them were covers. They did Good King Winslow, they did Linus and Lucy, the da 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 that song. They did uh, Christmas Time is Here Again by the Beatles. So uh, um, yeah, they're a lot of fun. And like I said, never released otherwise except on bootlegs but never released officially except for two members of the fan club. Said it last year, and I'll say it again, uh, Record Store Day, Black Friday, they always have two or three Christmas-related releases, being as that comes about at the end of November, the day after Thanksgiving. So if anyone from REM is listening, I always said it would be a good idea for them to take all their Christmas uh, fan club releases and put them out on a double album, colored vinyl maybe, for uh, Black Friday Record Store Day, I'd buy it. Um, so, REM, got that out of the way. Let's do the CDs real quick. Um, hold on, stop the presses. Bonus material, don't cost nothing. Day late and a dollar short, but a uh, Halloween CD that I got. It's a fun little CD. I think there's two or three of these in the series. It's the only one I have. Called uh, Mostly Ghostly, More Horror for Halloween neat stuff. These are, um, they're not a whole lot of Halloween songs, not anywhere near what there is for Christmas, but there is, uh, 25 songs on here. 
last song is called I Wanna Bite Your Hand, which sounds suspiciously like I Wanna Hold Your Hand with different lyrics, done by Gene Moss and the Monsters. And uh, so these are uh, kind of rock and roll garage rock bands. The time period on here is late 50s, like 58, 59, up through about 65, 66. So some really good, fun uh, rock and roll there. You know, it's all gimmicky Halloween stuff, but it's fun. But uh, I'm either late on Halloween or very early. So we'll talk about that maybe next Halloween. <clears throat> CDs Christmas-wise, we have one of the all-time classic Christmas albums, Charlie Brown Christmas by Vince Guaraldi Trio. You've all heard that. We have complete Christmas recordings, Columbia Christmas recordings of Gene Autry. You know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, his is probably the most famous version. And uh, this has quite a few songs on it. It has 27 songs, good fun stuff, great Christmas listening. We have the complete James Brown Christmas CD, which is actually not the complete James Brown Christmas recordings, but more on that in a second. This, uh, in uh, the 60s, well, actually, he yeah, the 60s, he did uh, three Christmas albums. I'm wanting to say 64, 66, and 68. I think I have those years right. And then he did a, a few singles that were Christmas-related that weren't on any of those albums. So uh, essential stuff, good stuff. Uh, some of this stuff on here doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas. I think he just recorded constantly, and so when he was doing a Christmas album, he probably had a, some extra songs that weren't really Christmas-related, but he said, oh, let's go ahead and put them on there. Because um, a couple of instrumentals on here that don't sound Christmassy at all. Most of the stuff is Christmas-related, though. And it's really good, uh, top-notch stuff. It's uh, not the not the ow James Brown that you're used to. It's a little more contemplative and subdued James here. And um, you know, there's some of them are pretty upbeat, but most of them are kind of uh, more reflective and and uh, Christmassy and really good stuff. And so yeah, that's worth picking up. Um, that's a great one. I want to get that the the albums are around on vinyl if you can find them. I eventually hope to get the three vinyl records, um, but for now I've got the CD. And uh, so yeah, the almost complete James Brown Christmas collection. Here's a great one. This was never on vinyl that I know of. Just came out on CD. Where will you be Christmas Day? These are Christmas songs from 1917 to 1959. There's a uh, really nothing traditional Christmas songs that you'd know except there's a version of Jingle Bells but everything else is um, uh, The Wrong Way to Celebrate Christmas, uh, Christmas Morning Blues, Christmas in Jail, Ain't That a Pain, it's a good song, Christmas Morning and the Rum Had Me Yawning, stuff like that and uh, really cool stuff and just sort of old 20s sounding music and some blues music and fun fun stuff it's uh there's the uh inside cover of that worth picking up tracking down that's definitely a good one for some uh something a little different on christmas little stevens underground garage christmas collection another great collection uh keith richards bob seeker the ramones darlene love uh da -da -da, brian setzer Joe Pesci, and that's actually the Joe Pesci from Goodfellas, uh, blah, 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 Electric Prunes, and the Kinks, and Wizard, and so forth. Great collection, worth picking up. We have uh, Destination Christmas by the Superions. That is Fred Snyder and some other people. Fred Snyder, the guy that used to be in the B-52s. Not a very good album. I've had this. This came out about 208, I think, and I play it... Um, I played it every year, see if I can get into it. I really can't. It's kind of a, um, sounds a little Christmassy because it's got some sleigh bells in it here and there, but even at that, it really doesn't feel or sound that Christmassy. It's kind of a cynical, hipster, ironic, uh, Gen X kind of take on Christmas. I don't really get into it. And it sounds like the B-52s, no surprise, being Fred Snyder, but... Um, 
sounds like second or third rate B-52s. The couple of songs on here are okay, but it's not really, unless you're just a huge B-52s fan, it's not worth your time to bother with, I don't think. That is, oh, <clears throat> as I said about the not completely complete James Brown Christmas recordings, this I just got a uh, few weeks ago, paid buck ninety nine for it. James Brown, the Merry Christmas album, this is from 1999, so it's a good 30 years after his last Christmas album, or previous Christmas album. This was actually, uh, Brown died in 205, I think this was his second to last album. Came out in 99, I think he put out one in 2000. This is uh, where the 60s Brown Christmas albums are essential and great, and run out and buy them right now. Mm -mm, this isn't any good. Pretty, pretty terrible. Uh, I might even do a review of this just for fun, but it, it's not very good. Uh, this is, you know, Brown late in his life, and uh, it's just not very good. But I'll talk about that more if I decide to do a review of it. Um, Sufjan or Sufjan Stevens, uh, Songs for Christmas. It is a CD box set. Never came out on vinyl also. I'm not going to go all through this, but the box opens up, and you get, I think there's five CDs in here, you get stickers down in there, you get a, a poster, a book, really funny Christmas story about getting tube socks for Christmas, um, get a book with a booklet with illustrations and the chords for the songs. It's, uh, like I said, it's five CDs. Each CD has, well, one has 11 songs, one has seven, nine, seven, and eight. Uh, it's a mixed bag, but it's definitely worth picking up because the good stuff is, 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 uh, is top shelf. And some of the stuff is just okay. There's, he does uh, cover traditional Christmas songs and some more obscure Christmas songs, and he writes a few of his own. And uh, the you know the good stuff is is gold on here. What he did, uh, he made Christmas little I guess CDRs for his family and friends. Between uh, does this say yeah between 201 and between 206, he'd make these little CDRs for family and friends for like stocking stuffers at Christmas, not meant for public release. And uh, they liked it, and they got to, he did the first one, just kind of goofing around and having fun. They all liked it. They asked him next Christmas, hey, are you going to make another Christmas CD for us? So he kept making them. Never thought of putting them out publicly, but they liked them so much that eventually he thought, hey, why not? And they came out in this little box set. Didn't come out on vinyl, unfortunately. This is worth picking up. It's not really that expensive, last I checked, uh, but it's... Uh, you know, you get, I don't know, 50-some songs and uh, some neat little little odds and ends in the box set. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. Uh, the one, uh, O Como Como Emmanuel, is that the one I like so much? Um, and he does these in different styles, so it's not just your traditional Christmas music. Some of them are, but some of them, it's, it's just all over the map with doing different styles of music on this. Um, definitely worth checking out, even if you're not a... Sufjan, Sufjan Stevens fan otherwise. So there's that. Um, we got 45s. Let's just go ahead and do the 45s. This, I believe, was last Black Friday Christmas. It's the Blind Boys of Alabama, legendary gospel band, doing a song with uh, Jason Isbell, was used to be in the drive-by truckers. John Paul White, I don't know who that is. But I'm not going to take it out, but it's on kind of a snowflake white vinyl. It's okay. The Linus and Lucy, Vince Geraldo Trio, another record store day, Black Friday release. Comes on, yeah, I'll take it out, why not? Uh, I don't know, what's that yellow, gold vinyl? So that's neat. We got That's not a Christmas-related item, that's just stuck in there. 
Uh, Paul McCartney Kisses. This was a limited edition thing. I think it's kind of worth a little bit of money nowadays. It's on colored vinyl. It sold out pretty quick. There's a red version, a red vinyl and a green vinyl version. I've got the red. The Christmas song, you know, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. This was around the time that he did his Kisses on the Bottom album of Old Standards. Christmas song, Paul does a pretty good version of it. I still, Nat King Cole, still the version to go to. And it's got wonderful Christmas time on the flip side. Uh, I know that Mean Mr. Mayo Joe likes that song. I think it's one of his worst songs ever. I don't like that song. Uh, this is the Crack Tones. And I got number 250 of 550 copies printed of this weird thing. It's it's uh, Each sleeve is handmade, so they say. And it's Christmas wrapping paper. It's cardboard. And there's actually... Um, it's actually like a cereal box. Yeah, it's a cereal box that they folded over to make the sleeve. And then they put Christmas wrapping paper on it. And they put all these little stickers so the crack, crack tones, it's Christmas time on the side one, and look, Ma, I'm drunk and crying on side two. I've never heard of the crack tones. I just ran across this and thought it looked kind of cool. So there's the record on red vinyl. Love that label. It's a neat label. It's uh, fluff and gravy records. But uh, it's kind of a fun little, both sides of this are pretty fun. I don't know anything about the crack tones otherwise. But their Christmas 45 I enjoy. So, yeah. And uh, then there's a uh, little sticker on there, like when you put on Christmas presents to and from. So, that's pretty cool. And I'll put that over here because I'm going to have to put that back in the sleeve. Uh, Low Straight Jackets. Great instrumental band. This is uh, Hark the Herald Angel Sing and Silver Bells. This was, I think, a limited edition thing. I believe I'm not sure Christmas 45 from them low straight jackets good stuff they do uh, uh, you know just the uh, guitar instrumental sounds really good this is voodoo funk and Academy oh, who is this that's the label this is a groovy Christmas and New Year by Hua Sarawanko I guess and The Soul of Christmas by the same guy. It's kind of a neat, uh, it's uh, like a raggae Christmas 45 that I picked up somewhere. And uh, it's kind of fun. I haven't heard it since last year, so I don't remember exactly, but I think I liked it. The Sonics, the legendary garage band from the 60s. And this is not an original. It's, I'm sure it's a reprint. There's the picture sleeve. It is, I don't believe in Santa Claus backed with Santa Claus and there's the label got the Sonics on it neat label there I'm sure that's not how the original looked their original records are worth a fortune if you can run across them because they didn't re weren't really known in the 60s and didn't sell a lot of records but great band great great 60s garage band um, the Knickerbockers remember the song lies it sounds like the Beatles here is um, and this is a Sunday's reprint picture sleeve the Knickerbockers, uh, side A is a song called Gotta Stop Dreaming. Side 2 is I Want a Girl for Christmas. I can relate to that. I, too, would like that. There's the record. So, and it's, it's good stuff. Uh, previously unissued 1966 recordings. So, uh, both sides of that are, are good stuff. Knickerbockers, good band. Great 60s garage rock. Fear, John Belushi's favorite punk rock band. Um, have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, backed with uh, another Christmas beer, which uh, another Christmas beer sounds like fear, sounds like punk rock sounding stuff. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is uh, leaving from Fear, the lead singer, singing very Perry Como-ish and a pretty straightforward uh, rendering of the song. He does a good job on it. It's, uh, it's a fun little 45. Daptone Records, that great label that uh, puts out soul music, uh, new soul music by, um, by uh, Charles Bradley and Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. 
couple of their, they had a few Christmas 45s with a neat label, Binky uh, Grip Tight, Holiday Breakdown, and Ant No Chimneys in the Projects on the other side by Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings. Very good stuff. I need to stop taking these out of the sleeves because it's taking too long to put them back in. Stone Soul Christmas by Binky Grip Tight, backed with World of Love by Binky Grip Tight. Dap Tone also. Um, great as well. I think these are still available, so visit Dap Tone's website and pick them up. Charles Bradley and the Gospel Queens with Mary's Baby. And Every Day is Christmas When I'm Loving You. Another Dap Tone record. Got green on there, got red on there. That does it for the 45s. Yes, that does it for the 45s. We'll set those up there. Albums. One of my favorite Christmas songs of all time, Father Christmas by the Kinks. This is a radio promo copy of that. The other side is Rock and Roll Fantasy, which isn't Christmas related. Um, heh. Try to figure out where to put these things because I got a pretty big stack of them. <clears throat> This is a new one for me, Elvis's Christmas album. I'm not going to open this, but it has a book in it and a gatefold. The original copies, this came out 58 or up 58, I think, and the original copies had the book, and then the second second pressings on, I don't think they had the book in them, but for the re-release that they did here a year or so ago, they put the book back in. So there's Elvis singing. Uh, and he, I think he had some other Christmas albums, but that was his first one found this in Doc's Records. It is Soul Christmas. Got it for, I think, $4. I'd seen this before. Love the cover of that, and it's just a uh, compilation album. you got Carla Thomas, Booker T and the MGs, King Curtis, William Bell, Otis Redding, Solomon Burke, Joe Tex. There's the back. Good stuff. That's one of them that I got uh, a couple of months ago. I haven't heard it yet. I know some of those songs, but Got this album for 50 cents and have not heard it yet. Fred Waring, Christmas Magic. There's the songs on the back. I have no idea. Well, uh, I'm thinking this is like my parents' type music, but that doesn't mean it isn't any good. We'll find out. Another one I got for 50 cents. I like the cover of this. Haven't heard it yet. Night Before Christmas by Johnny K and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And I like the uh, backside. Actually, this was the one. Let me get that out of there. I thought it had a, it's on the Diplomat label, which I was not familiar with. But I think that's kind of a cool label. Uh, so, yeah. I will be listening to those, both of these, to see if they're any good. Actually, there's several of them in here I haven't heard yet. Joan Sutherland, Joy of Christmas, another 50 cent album. And there's Joan. Looks like one of those old 50s, 40s, 50s type singers. Uh, brightest Stars of Christmas. Uh, with, well, it's another, you got Perry Como, Henry Mancini, Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass, Elvis, Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra, Julie Andrews, Ed Ames, Charlie Pride, Robert Shaw Coral, and Sergio Franche. I don't know, we'll see, 50 cents, you know, if it's not any good, I can use it for a coaster or something. Ah, uh, this will get me and Mr. Mayo Joe's heart racing, he has this album, he's shown it, Connie Francis, Christmas in My Heart, actually this is a good album, I like this, I played, I had this a couple of years, and I played this, played this last couple of Christmases, good stuff, this will get Robert Z's heart racing, because he had, uh, I think he said something about this this lady and that it makes his candy jingle jangle or something. Kate Smith Christmas album. I never heard of Kate Smith, but my mom knew who she was, so she's one of those old time singers from the fifties or whatever. Looks like the Bucket Woman from Keeping Up Appearances. Eh, played it. It's okay. I mean, she's got a good voice, but it's, like I said, it's kind of grand granny music. Uh Again, with Charlie Brown's Christmas album. Good to have it on vinyl, though. I don't know what that is. Um, green vinyl. And uh, so, 
This is a recent repress, not the original. One of the greatest, bestest Christmas albums of all time. This is coming out on Black Friday on Red Vinyl, I think, so I might pick up another copy of it. Phil Spector's Christmas Gift for You. Love this album. Not a bad track on it. Uh, even when it's not Christmas, this is fun to play. Uh, just a stunning album. It's got Darlene Love, the Ronettes, Bobby Socks, the Blue Jeans, the Crystals, Ronettes, Darlene Love again, and uh, so White Christmas, Frosty the Snowman. You hear these on the radio at Christmas, but that famous Phil Spector wall of sound, which is a great thing. Him stabbing his girlfriend, not so much, but at least, or you know, at least he knew how to make good, great music. One of my favorite Christmas albums of all time. Another one, I think Joe has this one. I'm pretty sure he saw it. He, he showed it, saw it. Uh, Paul and Paula, Holiday for Teens. Pretty good, fun album. Uh, we're getting a stack here. Let's see. We are back to Low Straight Jackets. Another, a, Chris, a whole album of their Christmas stuff. Great album. Love this red vinyl. Play this a lot at Christmas. I've had this a couple of years, two or three years. Uh, pick this one up. It's a good one. Fun, fun stuff. Some of this stuff's just great, even if it's not Christmas, like I said. Kenny Burrell, have yourself a soulful little Christmas. Love the cover. He's a jazz guy. Uh, some guitar, jazz guitar in there. Wonderful, wonderful, brilliant album. Uh, pick that up. Another one of my favorite Christmas albums of all time. Another jazz guy. Jimmy Smith, Christmas, 1964. Love this album. I was really, really well chuffed and happily surprised. I was in Central Market, that's a grocery store here, last Christmas, and they were playing uh, this over the store loudspeaker. Brilliant album. Even if you don't like jazz, go out and pick this up. You will love it. Uh, love that cover, too. All right. We got a ways to go, but we're getting there. This is a Black Friday Christmas album from two or three years ago. Death Might Be Your Santa Claus, another great cover. These are like the CD I showed about Where Will You Be Christmas Day. These are Christmas songs from, oh, you know, 1912 or so up through about 1945 or 50. Bessie Smith, uh, Reverend J.M. Gates, Tampa Red, a lot of blues stuff, Heavenly Gospel Singers. They got Butterbeans and Susie. I mean, you know, you got Butterbeans and Susie on an album, you got to pick it up. Uh, Christmas songs, and there's these little sermons by this Reverend Gates guy that basically says all of us are going to hell. So that's fun stuff. Uh, great cover. Uh, a lot of Christmas songs you never heard, but great, great stuff. Back to Joe again. He didn't really like this album. I love this album. Uh, and this is getting harder and harder to find on vinyl. It's out of print, so it's pretty rare. Really like this one. Bob Dylan, Christmas in the Heart. I don't know if he was doing this tongue-in-cheek or if he was doing it, um, you know, uh, heartfelt. But I like it. There's the inner sleeve. And uh, there's another inner sleeve. Great, great pictures there. Great album. Hard to find on vinyl. Uh, I really enjoy it. And it's not one to cooperate, so let's put it up there. We'll put that together later. Let's see, Paul Revere and the Raiders, A Christmas Present and Past, a very weird, strange, oddball album. I like it, may not be to everybody's taste, but it's fun. If you go in there expecting your regular Paul Revere and the Raiders stuff like Kicks and Hungry and all, it's a little bit different than that, but I like it. Rinda Lee, Merry Christmas, another great Christmas record. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. James Brown, Santa's got a brand new black bag. This isn't one of his official, well, his official release, but it's not one of his three official Christmas albums. This, I think, is sort of a comp compilation of some of those albums. Uh, some good stuff, though. Uh, she and Him, who, kind of a boring, but this they do a good job here. Just old Christmas songs. It's on red vinyl. Um, I've had this several years, and I play it every year, and it's, it's your traditional Christmas songs. Uh, good stuff. I like it. Uh, da, 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 da. We are getting there. Cool Yule. 
just a compilation album of a bunch of Ike and Tina Turner, Safaris, Solomon Burke, Paul and Paula, James Brown, Ed Kooky Burns. So it's all good. Alrighty. Little Drummer Boy, Voices of Christmas. Got this free, have not played it yet. I'm not sure if it's a spoken word thing or if it's Christmas music. Well, it's got songs, so I guess it's music. My Robert Z will get a kick out of this because this is my mint condition copy of, uh, oh, hold on there. Oh, hold on. There we go. Put some bubble gum on the bottom there. Beach Boys Christmas album. I definitely need to get a better copy of this because it's a great album. Uh, the record actually is in fairly good shape. But uh, let's put that up there so that that doesn't fall all over the place. All righty. Nat King Cole, Christmas song. Of course, that's a classic. Good stuff. Uh, Tony Bennett, Christmas album. I haven't heard that yet. Got that free. We are almost to the end. This is a new one I got a few weeks ago. It's a repress. It's not the original. But uh, Bing Crosby. Merry Christmas, Bing Crosby. Of course, that has White Christmas on it. And uh, Adestus Fidelis, uh, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, I'll Be Home for Christmas, Jingle Bells, Santa's come, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I haven't played that yet because I just got it, but I'm sure it's going to be great and I'm looking forward to it. A Jolly Christmas from Frank Sinatra. Same thing, I just got this recently. It's a re-release of uh, the old album. And three more to go. Jackson 5, Christmas album. I love their version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Was it Joe that said he didn't like that one? But uh, anyway, looking forward to hearing of that. Just got that, another re-release. It is not Christmas until I hear my Beatles Christmas songs. The Beatles Christmas album. Uh, obviously, this isn't the original. Wish it was, but it's not. But it's still great. And I still look forward to playing this every Christmas and hearing these on the radio every Christmas. And one more to go. We talked about Sufjan, 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 I can't say that, Stevens, the, uh, what was it, 2001 to 2006, that CD collection. He kept doing that after 2006, making those little Christmas CDs for his family and friends. And he put them, and this goes, it doesn't say on here, and I don't want to open the box to get in it. This is vinyl box set. I think there's five albums in here. And uh, came out on CD too, but it's vinyl. This has the albums. It's got stickers. It's got posters. It's got books. It's got lots of stuff. And again, the, the I don't know, some 50, 60 Christmas songs. Traditional Christmas songs and some original Christmas songs and some crazy stuff and all sorts of different styles from what you expect from Christmas music to sort of uh, weird prog rock and new age and and uh, mixed bag because some of it's not great, but there's a lot of greatness in it. So there you go, Adam. That is my Christmas collection, unless I've left something out, which maybe I have, but anyway... That was a long video. Merry Christmas, everybody, and I uh, hope others show their Christmas collection.